So why is this simple Art Deco jug the hardest subject I've ever drawn? Harder than the Musée du Louvre or the interior grand staircase of the Palais Garnier. And I think it's because it is such a simple subject. I've remarked in numerous videos that a simple form is not necessarily easy to draw because with so few lines, it's important that we get the lines that are there much more precise because there's no way or little way to disguise any imprecision. And that's the problem I had with this jug. The other problem I had, well, when I say problem, I mean difficulty, challenge, is that I'm drawing freehand with a pen. And ink is not the kindest medium to use for rounded surfaces. And I've been talking a fair bit lately about thinking marks instead of lines because lines create very sharp edges that don't always reflect what we see in life. And where we have rounded edges, such as, say, at the base of this jug, in places they almost become a corner, but they're such a soft corner you'd hesitate to judge between a corner and a curve. And yet, how do we represent that? with a line. If we draw a line, it will give it a very sharp effect, which it doesn't have in life. Now, there's really no hatching, no, no shading I'm going to do with this. So it really is an outline drawing. So that was the challenge. How do I represent all these soft edges with a pen and not change the feel, the slight roundedness of all of the edges of this? Plus the fact that there's nowhere to go if I make a mistake. I normally align with what I've already drawn, but that tends to presume a relatively complex expanding subject where we start in a place and we move out. There really is just the one place with this, and so therefore that's not so helpful. I have to rely much more on careful observation and just placing a few marks with my pen. Now you can see what I'm trying to do with some of the edges and not draw a straight line, but to give some lines and dots to give a sense of something happening there, but hopefully something visually that's significantly less sharp than a line would be. And I'm doing the same thing down the bottom here. And I did a couple of lightish lines close together for the corners to try and soften the roundness of the edge. Now, I'm trying to work out where to, where to put this handle. This handle is always going to be the challenging part. So I'm noting where I want it to join and how far out I want it to come and what that furthest out point aligns with. Now I don't, I don't bring my curve in tightly enough, which unfortunately gives the effect of a shallower curve than the one I wanted. But I simply can't correct that now without messing it up, without making it look awkward in some way. Whereas I don't think at the moment it looks awkward. It just doesn't look as true to the reference as I would have liked. So there are these stepped elements in the handle. And again, I, uh, there are edges to them, but they're very soft edges. So I'm trying to represent the detail, but not give it a sharpness that it doesn't have. I'm feeling pretty tense about the whole drawing at this stage. So I am just strengthening these lines because I felt they were a bit insubstantial for the importance that they have in terms of the overall structure compared to some of the other lines I've drawn, which were heavier lines, but not as important to the overall. So I'm not, I'm not doing an outline. I'm not going around just over, going over lines because I think they're all too light or I just want to give a sharp edge. I'm making a choice to do this because I feel I need to even 
the overall line work so that the basic, the fundamental outlines of the jug stay prominent. And so now there's this slight relief, this geometric slight relief coming out, which is so characteristic of Art Deco. And again, challenges of curves that are parallel and close to other curves. And now with this one, I have an edge to it. So I need to get a couple of lines that are close to the other one. And that's probably as good as I'm going to get. So it's it's all looking, for my taste, a bit, a bit fuzzy. But I'm not sure trying to do it sharper would have been any better. So what do you think? Well, what's my tip that you wouldn't have guessed? What's the thing that perhaps you don't think I would have done in drawing this jug? And I must admit, this is not something that I've done very often. I might have done it in maybe a dozen of the hundreds of drawings I've done for YouTube. So let me show you what I had to do with this one more than any other drawing I've done. And here it is. And here I go. So this was my first take. I wasn't very happy with that. So I went to my second take pretty quickly. And that was sort of going okay for a bit. And not too bad at this stage. But I got my lines at the top of the jug messed up and then I had to do some hatching which I hadn't wanted to do to cover it and I didn't like the hatching and I thought I'll start again. And once you start starting again, gosh, it's easy just to keep starting again. So I start again. And no. Work on this one a bit more. This one got a bit further, but it's generally too short and stubby. But it did progress further. Not so good. Let's start again. Again. I think this is the last time I start again. And look, my point with all this is, and the reason I'm showing you these is firstly, so you realize it's work and it's effort and it's, it's practice. And there's nothing magic for me or for anyone else. We get practice at doing things and we get better at the things that we do all the time. I haven't drawn subjects such as this very frequently, which is part of the beauty of this daily drawing exercise practice because it challenges me in drawing things that I haven't drawn before or not very frequently or not not with the same focus. And that always pushes our skills because I'm pulling on skills and techniques here and penmanship that I really haven't had much chance to develop. But the thing I did learn is that as we practice, if we practice thoughtfully and do things repeatedly, sometimes we do get better at it. So that's my tip. Don't be afraid to practice and to do things over and over again. Because sometimes that's what we need to do. Not endless repetition, but refining our understanding, refining our creative thinking, refining our penmanship with the sorts of lines and shapes, angles, connections we need to make. G'day. I'm Stephen Travers. Look, I've walked past this jug in the house so many times, looked at it, thought about it, and gone, nah. I thought it was time I took up the challenge. So I hope you have a go as well. And don't let the fact that I've told you it's hard to draw put you off having a go, because this is how we learn. We don't need to have perfection. What we do need is to have an attitude of trying things and of doing our best and of thinking critically as to how we can improve and pushing on. So it was a very interesting half an hour for me while I did all of those drawings. But of course, the jug will be on my channel community page as a reference, and I really hope you have a look at it and have a go drawing it yourself. But look, whether you do or you don't, whatever you draw and however you draw it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.